watch it later. Yeah, people do look at it later. It's good. Yes, yes. So, okay, so I actually we're on a brand new chapter. Uh, I'm going to finish the second part of De Hashem. Um, the first part was about God and right and man, God and man, the responsibility of man, um, which correspond to the letter letter Yud in the name of Hashem. Right, we know we have four sections which correspond to the four letters of Hashem's name. Um, and so we understood that all what God wants is to benefit man from his own good, from his own perfection. And he um, therefore created a world. He created a world where he um, allowed us to make free choices in order to earn that good. God wanted us to um, marry us, so to speak. Uh, to be in a relationship with us and God create a world where we can choose that relationship on our own instead of being imposed on us. And that's the, that's the, that's the greatest gift given to a create beings is the ability to choose to be in a relationship or not. Um, and that's the youth of Hashem's, na of Hashem's name. That's, that's where it all starts. And that's uh, the, fir the first section of the Hashem is all about man's power to uh, choose and make the choice to have in a, be in a relationship with God. Um, and in a way, it's really the whole first section of the Hashem was a preparation for Rosh Hashanah, because Rosh Hashanah is the Rosh of the Shana, right? And uh, we, it's the power of choice, the power to decide a, about anything that's going to happen this year the power to elevate everything that happened this past year. What type of life do you want to be, you have? What type of choice you want to make in relation to your Judaism, your soul, God? What type of relationship you want to have with God? This is going to be determined on Rosh Hashanah, how you approach Rosh Hashanah, how you... Um, right, Rosh Hashanah is going back to Gan Eden, is going uh, on the day of Rosh Hashanah is the day that Adam Arishon made the choice to eat from the Etz Adas and not the Etz Achaim. So it's all about the power of choice. In a way, we could almost say that Rosh Hashanah is the festival of the power of choice. And the party of Rosh Hashanah, meaning the celebration is about our ability to um, our recognition that the choice, that power of choice comes from God, and it's celebrating that recognition, that, 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 that power. Um, and in a way is, you know, there's two days to Rosh Hashanah, so there are different ways to approach it, but one, one way that I would approach it is the first day you celebrate God as king, the, se the second day you celebrate men as king. Right, because God kings, uh, God crowns the one that crowns the king in a way. So you become the prince, you become God's representative on earth, and there's nothing more exciting than that. More, something, no, no more, nothing more amazing and um, on, honor, honorable than that. So that, well, that's the first chapter. So I think, in a way, the, what we learned till now was a great preparation for the new year. It's going to be a powerful year with a lot of things that are going to happen towards Geula, hopefully closer, faster. But um, I think as we come closer to the Geula, we have more and more choices that we can make. And um, in a way, we're giving as we're I, I believe personally that we're put in situation with more choices to make than ever before because we're at the end of time and it's our last chance to make choices on that level. Once Moshe is here, once the Besami Dash is here, we won't have as much power in our free choice because God will be revealed. Uh, we'll know what's right or wrong. Nobody is going to, you know, mess up with the king when the king is, uh, is around, so to speak. So it is our 
um, chance to be as, um, how we say, as powerful as we can ever be and make the right choices. So um, now we're entering the second, the second part, which corresponds to the hey of Hashem's name. And um, it's basically the Be'ashgachat Abore. So the providence, divine providence, the way Hashem runs the world. So the yud is the energy, is the potential, and the hey is of how the potential now goes into different ways and is going to come into the world, the way Hashem runs, runs the show and directs the power of the yud, uh, the energy, the potential that's in creation. And um, the Rambam says, and not just the Rambam, but uh, all the great philosophers and Kabbalists say there's nothing more deep than Dashgacha, the process of Hashgacha um, Pratit and Hashgacha Klalit, the way Hashem runs the world. Um, so, and interestingly, actually, I just remember now, this is Rara Weinberg, my Rebbe, was giving a shear about Rosh Hashanah. He says the first day of Rosh Hashanah, you focus on God as a king, that, that uh, the fact that he's the essence, is the source, and the second day is God as the more derech, who directs us in creation, who speaks to us in creation, who directs us in creation, how he's involved. And so that's really literally what we're seeing here in the first and second chapter. So it fits perfectly. Um, as usual with the Ramchal, everything is structured and uh, well, well organized. Um, so we have Naseh and Nishma. Um, first and second part. Okay, so let's go into uh, the Hashgacha, and here it speaks about the Hashgacha in general. So the Ramcha says like that, um, it is evident that everything that exists, both above and below, was created only because the highest wisdom deemed these phenomena necessary and useful for furthering the purpose of creation as a whole. The natural laws and properties of each created thing were ordained by the highest wisdom to perfectly fit the role that each thing plays in the general scheme. Um, so therefore, right, everything is designed. There's nothing made by mistake. There's no coincidence. Even what we call chance or destiny or coincidences, the laws of nature, all that is uh, precisely designed um, in order to fit into the big picture. Um, but everything has a purpose, right? Since each thing was initially created for a purpose, it is appropriate that it be maintained as long as it is serving its purpose. God created all things. He continues to oversee them and maintain them in the state that he desires. So, were the dinosaurs? It looks like they were dinosaurs, right? Um, but they're no longer needed. Maybe they were needed for a specific purpose at, 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 in the past. Um, maybe they were created for the purpose of uh, challenging people with thinking that um, we are millions of years old and uh, the world uh, to allow scientists uh, to uh, be trapped into the world of evolution and, um, you know, test, challenge, and understanding that there's a God um, or not. So that's just an, an example of the different things. But right now, there's no more dinosaurs, meaning they're not needed. Also, this is what the reason why we say if someone, when someone dies, usually it's uh, because that person finished their purpose. And therefore, they don't need to be here anymore. So is it sad? No, it's not sad. I mean, it's sad because we don't have that person to enlighten us in this world. But for the person itself, it's, it's not sad. I finished my purpose, now I'm, now I'm, I'm leaving. So, um, continues the Ramcha, as we have discussed earlier. So by the way, that's very important. We come on Rosh Hashanah, we understand that everything that happened in, our, in the past year 
was designed by God, had a purpose, and in a way we ha had the purpose to, for us to become, to make the choices necessary uh, for us to come close, as close as possible to God. And um, we have to kind of go over our whole year and try to think, okay, what, why did this happen? How that um, event, that, that unfolding of events and my choices led me close or further away from God. So you got, you got to kind of uh, go through your year and ask yourself, like, you know, what was the purpose of all that? And did I reach the, purp the purpose that I'm supposed to reach uh, my mission? Um, it pushes us to look into our mission. Am I closer to God this year than last year? Right. And also it pushes us to get ready for next year on like, like uh, making new goals and um, find out how learning what I have learned this year, what I can use in order to be even closer to God this coming year. So introspection necessary. You have to come on Roshana with a list already of, of what you accomplished this year and what you plan to accomplish next year. And you show with that God, because if you come in front of God with no purpose, because God himself has a purpose and, you know, he wrote it all. He wrote the whole Torah. So what's your Torah? You know, God writes the Torah. You also have to write the Torah, right? What's the, the letter of the, the Torah? The Torah is a letter of, God, of love for God, uh, from God to us. Now, what's your letter of love to God from you? Um, we have to emulate God. Everything does, God does, we have to do. God makes babies, so to speak. He creates Adam, Eve. We make babies. That's the first thing that we ask to do in the Torah, right? So, again, we have to emulate God and uh, we have to come, we have to show God, look what I did this year and this is my plan for the next year to come close to you. Just like God says, you see, this is my plan with the Torah, those 6,000 years on how I'm going to get close to you. But that's his side, and we have we need our side too. So, uh, any questions? No, crystal clear. Okay, so let's let's continue. Uh, as we have discussed earlier, the beginnings of all created things are the transcendental forces. All physical things result from them, and all the details are consequence of what is reflected to them by these forces, following their own detailed qualities. There is nothing large or small in the physical world that does not have its cause and origin among some aspect of these forces. So we spoke last time, you know, that there were spiritual forces, kohot, and, and um, the, everything that happened in this world is controlled by those things. It's given its strength and its purpose, its energy from there. Um, even the mosquito, even corona, even, you know, Biden, Trump, all those things. And this year is going to be even more intense, um, uh, hopefully intensely good. But, you know, there's always the other forces that plays uh, in the same time. Um, so I, I wanted to add that, that, you know, whatever lessons we have learned from Corona, how we reacted to Corona, where were, where, were we scared? Where were we anxious? Were we focus on others or focus on ourselves. the whole way we reacted to Corona has to be put into play into how we're going to approach God this year and what we want to accomplish next year. You know, if there's a second wave of Corona, are you going to be more ready than the first time? Are you going to be more prepared? You're going to know how to react to it the right way. Are you going to panic or are you going to take it as Ashgacha Pratit? Hashem is teaching a lesson, what, the, what we're supposed to learn. Apparently, maybe we didn't learn it well enough. What it is that Hashem was trying to teach us or to teach me. Everybody sometimes has its own, there's a global message, but there's also a personal message. So we need to look into that. The one who oversees all these concepts is God himself. And he does so in the same way that he created them. Accordingly, he first oversees the array of transcendental forces and everything that results from the essential nature. 
He then supervises the angelic agents who are appointed to maintain the existence and function of all that exists, giving them power to do their task. So like we say, Hashem arranges everything with its power, the powers, the root and the energy, sends it. The angels are in charge of distributing and organizing um, all those forces to every little thing. That's the famous saying that uh, over every blade of grass is an angel that takes care of it and says, grow, grow, right? We have our own malachim, you know, and the, 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 we know that according to the Gemara, we have four malachim. Michael, Mishmuli Gabriel, Mishmuli Uriel, Mishmuli Raphael, right on top of me is the Shekhinah. So we have four angels around us and they are here to protect us, to help us, they coach you. You know, you, we have four coach constantly. Um, and um, we have to be aware of that. It's, 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 uh, we also have our, our own angels. Sometimes these have even a high angel that that's, directs you personally specific angels that is uh, a person's angel so to speak some well this is where i don't know much about it you have to go into kabbalah ask a real kabbalist but uh, you know so you have magidim the higher part of your neshama and a specific angel that is here to help you with you anavi or all those things those are exist and they're here to also guide you and help you okay uh, last section of that paragraph Section three, the human race, however, is different from all other species. So until now, he spoke about everything, about everything in the world, but this is an exception, which is the human, human beings. Since it was given free will and the ability to involve him itself with both perfection and deficiency, man is therefore an active moving influence and not something that is merely acted upon. Ooh now comes the uniqueness of the human being. Hashem runs the world, but you, human being, have the ability to, in a way, go against or be, not be controlled by all those forces. And that's that famous saying, Ein mazal Israel, right? Meaning that they are influences, but we have in our hands the power. It doesn't mean you're not influenced at all. It means you're able to deal with this influence and not be just slave to those influences. He will speak about it later. There's a whole thing about um, the, the stars. The stars. Yeah. Okay. So he says like that. The providence dealing with men must therefore also be different from the concer concerning other species. Species. I don't know how to say that word. In the case of men, it must oversee and scrutinize every detail of these activities and bring about things that are the result of his ways and the fruit of his deeds. Each one of a person's deeds, as well as their results, are scrutinized and, provident, and providence is then excellent to him in the particular manner and that suits their consequences. And the individual is judged measure for measure as will be discussed in a later chapter. So, we see that man is put in a special category where because he has his own free choice, he is going to be uh, judged. The other, all the rest, doesn't, animals don't need to be judged and trees don't need to be judged, um, so to speak, meaning that they don't have free choice. Why are you going to judge something that doesn't have free choice? You don't judge something that has free choice, which pushes us to ask the question, why there is there a new year for the trees and a new year for you know, water and a new year for, um, for the fruits, whatever, we have all different things, right? Uh, um, I said, to be shvat, all, all the things, new year for the trees. What, what are we talking about? It's not judging the trees. The trees don't need to be judged. It's a judgment, I guess, that is reflects its co connection with men. It's judged based on men actions, but it, it's not that those things are judged. But you men, we human beings that have free choice, they therefore, and since we can inter interact with the whole system and influence the whole system, each one has to be judged based on how he used the system. So that's how powerful we are. Therefore, everything we do has to be uh, re-evaluated, re-examined, -exam right? So that we don't, 
so that God guides us along the way and we realize that everything we do matter, how powerful we are, and that we can change the world. So that's, uh, again, what, what happens on Rosh Hashanah and, uh, and Yom Kippur. This is not true, however, of any species other than men. The, the members of other species, species are acted upon but have no influence themselves. They merely exist to maintain the species as a whole according to the nature of its spiritual root. Providence is thus merely extended to maintain the root and its branches according to the inherent nature and function of that root. So we, we are special. We're special. We're human beings. Baal Hashem. Human beings, on the other hand, act and exert influence as individuals. They therefore require individual providence and everything must be the result of their deeds, no more and no less. He, we will expand upon this in the following chapters. So that's, that's um, how it is. So it says that, right, everything is directed. However, because man has free choice, it is in a way a unique, another judgment that needs to be done, especially for men. And, and the all of creation need to be arranged, rearranged for men. And the celebration of that uh, power, greatness, is really Rosh Hashanah. We're celebrating the, the power of the Ashgacha, uh, on the power that man has on his influence in the Ashgacha uh, of the world, that, of God towards the world. And, um, and then we will continue next time uh, with men in this world about how it is that he gets involved in the world and how we affect the world, with, but uh, uh, in relationship to the Ashkab, Lalit and Pratit. Um, any questions, uh, clarification you have? No? Okay. Good. I'm glad it's crystal clear. Um, so I wish everyone a beautiful uh, week and um, God willing we will do before Rosh Hashanah, well I guess we're speaking all about Rosh Hashanah, but I might be doing a special class just about preparation for Rosh Hashanah, um, but a lot of what we talk today about is really uh, what what we need for for that uh, preparation. So could you, um, um, can I can I ask you to do like a, a is it possible to do like a two three sentence just review of the main main points of today? Do you have a minute or two for that? Um, sure. Um, well, basically, the first thing I was saying that De Hashem has four sections, and the first two, the, all the four sections correspond to the, the name Yud Hey and Vav Hey. Okay. Um, the reason it's important is because it helps us understand the structure in which God arranged the world and in which we are meant to understand it. Um, the first section, which corresponds to the youth, correspond to uh, the potential that men, that, well, the power that is, sorry. The first section focuses on men, on God's power um, and how he created a world in order to reach out to men. The second section is where we see how God rearranged everything in order to enable the world to have a relationship with him. Okay, and that's what the whole thing of the Ashgacha. So we are basically told here that um, something that we need to know in order to start our new year, Rosh Hashanah, is that even though, yes, God is king and he's all powerful and he, you know, he controls Corona and all this stuff, whatever we do as human beings, if we are aware of it, if we do it with intention, if we understand what it is to be a human being, especially if you're a Jew, even more so, you have to understand that you almost has, have as much power as God in this world. Almost. 
not obviously because this is king of kings. We're like a king, but he's king of kings. And God wants us to act like him, just the same way he creates the entire world to be able to do good to us and to have a connection with, towards us, us, that's the first section. We also have to create a world where we can have a connection with God and give good to God, right? And that's what he says, you can give tzedakah to God. You can give tzedakah to God. Yeah, you can give tzedakah to God. So we have to understand that there's a relationship going on and that we are very much involved in that relationship. It's very real. It's very powerful. So that's a little bit where we are at and um, what we have to try to remember on a regular basis, but even more so on Rosh Hashanah where a lot of things are being decided for this coming year. And um, yeah, that's... Thank you. Um, uh, what, what would you say is the ideal um, response to Corona? What, what, what would you say? Hmm. That's a big, uh, like my Rebbe said, a big doozy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think there's the right response. Um, I think it's going to be different for everyone. Um, I think we all experience it in a bit different way. Some people in a similar way. Again, I think it depends the perspective. I, I look at it as, you know, preparation for the world. The, the main thing is not to look at it as a punishment. I think that that's for sure. If you look at it as a punishment, it's you're not helping anything. Uh, you're looking at it as a, as part of the process of you, you, we everything that happens in the world, whether it appears good or appears bad. You have to see, okay, what is this situation pushes me pu pushes uh, me to. Um, act upon, meaning how does it touch my feelings? How, do I feel insecure? Do I feel safe? Do I feel lonely? Do I feel, um, you, know, you know, threatened? All those, whatever you are going to, you're like a mirror, whatever you're going to feel in you because of that um, is going to be a real reflection of what needs to be deal, dealt with. Because really, if is if ain't on milvado, right? If yiras Hashem, sivishti Hashem lenegitamid, then you should not have, you should not be scared, you should not be threatened, and you should not be worried. Uh, so I guess we have a lot to work on. <laughs> should never be lonely, never alone. Hashem is here all the time. So gam ki elch beget samavet lo irara. So, you know, all those emotions, it's an indication of where we are at, I think, and how we need to um, prepare for the next year, uh, for hopefully not, but if there's a second wave, be ready for the second wave, and to, um, to take ownership of it, to have done, work on those feelings and see what, what was missing, work on our character traits so that we can tackle and, and, and deal with whatever is coming in a, on a high level. Thank you. I, I also think that, um, I don't know whether this is accurate, but to, 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 to know that, uh, like, like they say, the small, the small, Hashem's smallest creature, that he literally put the entire world to its knees with, that, that creates and it, it inspires a tremendous year of Shammai. I mean, you're, you know, you have to know that this is Hashem. There's nothing else. Like, it's not just one country, another country, 20 countries, the whole entire world. That's like, it, it's awesome. It's like, it can't be anything but Hashem speaking to us. Absolutely. So that's like a powerful part of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, all the other stuff is, you know, uh, is, is personal way we need to work on it, like you said. Absolutely, very good point. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. the invisible, the in the air, airborne molecule, all that is uh, where you know it's controlled by Shem. Was what, was the Black Plague or any of the other plagues um, so global? Uh, I, I don't I believe this. 
I don't know if it was so global because people didn't travel as much, but I believe that yeah, the, well, the Spanish flu and stuff like that, but people, I don't think it went worldwide. They, they oh, were the I traveling think, also causes that, yeah. Right, the, because we're more traveling uh, and more connections, so I believe there was more, that's why it's more global. Uh, I don't think it was as global as it is today, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but it was, it was right. that still. <laughs> they still yeah. have trains and things at the time. All right, yeah. beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. And to be continued next week, Mr. Sashem. Beautiful stuff. Thank you. Bye. Bye.